In this video, we're going to talk about descriptive research methods in psychology. So first of all, what is the purpose of descriptive research methods? The purpose is to observe and describe behavior in order to increase understanding. Let's talk about the first type of descriptive research method, which is called a case study. So a case study is when one person or animal is observed and studied in depth in hope of revealing uh, universal principles. The advantages to this type of research method is that you can get detailed information about the case and in-depth information. You can study unusual cases that you usually wouldn't be able to with other research methods. Uh, it can be cheap and you can do it quickly so it wouldn't take a lot of time. Uh, there's an ethical advantage because let's say you want to study uh, what would happen to a person if no one talked to them for 12 years. But it's hard to study that because you don't want to not talk to someone or put them in a, like isolate them for 12 years because that wouldn't be considered ethical. But you maybe you find a case where someone was isolated for 12 years and maybe you could do a case study on that individual. Uh, it also gives us ideas for further study. The disadvantages to a case study can be that the individual can be atypical and therefore the results can't be generalized. The observer uh, who is doing the case study might have a bias and you can't establish cause and effect in case studies and also the observer uh, can make mistakes and they can have a big impact because they're only studying one person or very few people. Let's talk about surveying. So this is another research method. Uh, surveying is a technique used for getting the self-reported attitudes or of or behaviors of people. When you have to, when you do a survey, you have to make sure that uh, the people you are surveying comes from a representative slash random sample. What that means is that everyone in the population being studied has an equal probability of being included in the study. Here are some issues with having a survey, or at least downfalls or problems. Uh, one is sampling bias. So for example, if you were to mail service to everyone, uh, then only the people who are conscientious, the people who feel responsible, that they, they feel that they're responsible for, get, for, sending the mail, for sending the survey back, only those people would send them back, and then you'd have a sampling bias. And another example would be ask everyone who walks through the, the main entrance, but then there are people who walk through the back door and maybe uh, the population you're trying to study also includes the people who are in the back door. And so the people in the back coming through the back door, they wouldn't have an equal probability of being included in the study, so therefore you have a sampling bias. Now another problem is awarding effect. So when you ask questions in a survey, if they're awarded a certain way, they can skew the results, so people would probably be more f f fine with the word not allow versus censor, or aid to the poor as opposed to welfare. There's also the framing effect, which is uh, the way you're going to frame a situation, the way you're going to describe it, and that can skew the results as well. One of the other issues that is faced with a survey is called the false consensus effect. The false consensus effect means that uh, is the bias that others share our beliefs. So if I really like grilled chicken, which I do, I have a bias to believe that other people also enjoy grilled chicken when others may not as much as I do. Now let's talk about the advantages of a survey. The advantages are that it is relatively inexpensive. You can use a survey to describe a large population if you've got uh, the right random sampling of that population. No other research method has the ability to 
um, give us inform give us give us data that can be generalized to populations of millions. There's general high reliability uh, due to the lack of observer bias. So the problem that we had with the case study was that the observer observing the person uh, can have a bias; they can make a mistake. But with a survey, that's not really the case. All you're looking at is just answers to the questions that were asked. Uh, the disadvantages are that the information is not as deep. There's also uh, an issue called courtesy bias where the respondents, instead of giving honest answers, they give answers that they think that the interviewers want to hear. So that can be a problem because people may lie or may not answer the questions truthfully. They want to they want the answer that they think pleases the person who's reading the results. The other problem is that uh, you can have skewed questions or framing or you know wording effect and that can skew the results. Let's talk about the last descriptive research method. It is called naturalistic observation. So this type of research method is observing and recording behavior that happens in naturally occurring situations without manipulating variables or changing the situation. So an example would be walking down Fair Oaks Street and then dropping your wallet and then seeing how many people would tell you that you dropped your wallet or going down Mission Street and asking people uh, for 20 bucks and then seeing how many people actually give you 20 bucks right it's just a naturally occurring situation you're not trying to control for variables you're not necessarily trying to change the situation you're just seeing how people would behave in a, a natural situation so the advantages to this is that it provides data for research um, the behavior isn't altered by being in an experiment because when people are in an experiment they generally know they're in an experiment but when they're in a naturalistic observations the test subjects are unaware that uh, they are part of a study or that you're observing them they are just behaving as they would so they wouldn't necessarily try to consciously change their behavior because of uh, being watched uh, the disadvantages is that it describes behavior but it doesn't explain it and then there's also observer bias similar to how we had that in the case study uh, in naturalistic observation the information has to come through a person somebody has to be doing the ob observing and that individual doing the observing can have some biases or make some mistakes uh, this one is called Hawthorne effect where people behave differently when they know they are being watched now this is if the person does know that they're being watched, uh, but if they don't, then this one applies.